Hi everyone, it's Mrs. D here. I know you can't see me, but um, I want to go through the first experiment we did with Karen yesterday at the UMass lab, the transformation um, experiment with the bacterial cells, with the E. coli cells. And I need to have you learn how to calculate transformation efficiency, which you can see the formula on the board. It's the total number of colonies that ended up growing on the 2B plate divided by the amount of DNA that you actually spread on that plate, okay? So just to remind you guys, you set up four plates at the lab, 1B and 2B. The Bs represent the Luria broth. That's the broth without the ampicillin. And 1s represent controls. 2s represent the um, plates that got the actual plasmids, the DNA put in. So you would have expected plates 1B and 2B to both have um, bacteria growing on them and lots of bacteria, so we would expect to see a lawn. So here's the results of that experiment. Here's 1B, the control, and because we didn't have those special tools, we got a funny-looking lawn, but you can see lots of bacteria grew here because this doesn't have any ampicillin in it. Um, the cells grow even though they're not transformed because this is the 1B plate. This is the 2B plate where, again, the, um, the b bacterial cells could be transformed, but they still grow here because this plate doesn't have any ampicillin because this is the 2B plate. So again, you see the lawn um, there. The 1A and 2A plates represent the plates grown those plates have ampicillin in that auger. So the 1A plate is probably the most important plate. It's the control plate. This represents bacterial cells that did not get exposed to any plasmid DNA, so they should not get transformed, so they should not be allowed to grow here. And in fact, here, here is a 1A plate, which is totally clean. The smudge you see under the A is my fingerprint, okay, when I was holding it. But that is not a colony on the plate. Totally clean. So zero colonies there. But look at this um, nice 1A plate. It's hard because they wrote their initials in the middle, but the this is what you would have expected to see on your 2, 2A plate, I mean. This is the plate that has ampicillin in the agar, and these cells, these bacterial cells, did get the DNA plasmids, so these should have been transformed. But not all of them, because, you know, our transformation efficiency isn't 100%. But look at the nice colonies that are growing here. This is what you would expect to see. And, in fact, each one of these nice little circles represents one transformed bacterial cell that overnight in our incubator at 37 degrees grew up into a nice little colony that we could actually count. Thanks to Dylan for actually counting the cells and the number of transformed cells on that plate equals 842. So there's 842 colonies on that plate. So the only other number we need now is how much DNA did we actually spread on that plate. Well, I was looking through Karen's protocol, and it looks like you spread five microliters, or you put five microliters of DNA in your solutions. But five microliters of DNA that I think was 0 .005 micrograms per microliter. So we do the math here. If you put five microliters of this solution in, we just multiply, and we get 0 0.025 um, micrograms of DNA was actually put into your cells because the microliters will cross out when you do that multiplication. So we divide 842 colonies by the 0 0.025 micrograms of DNA that was actually put into that, put on that plate. And if you do that math, I think I did the math right, it comes out to be 842 divided by 0.025 micrograms is um, a transformation efficiency of 33,680 colonies or per microgram of DNA. Now what we end up saying is 
that really represents individual bacterial cells. So that's 33,680 bacteria were transformed per microgram of DNA. Because we're scientists, we do scientific notation. We'd say 3.37 times 10 to the um, fourth uh, bacteria were transformed per microgram of DNA. So your book, you know, the um, manual says that transform, we usually want transformation um, efficiency between 8 times 10 to the 2 and 7 times um, 10 to the 3 um, uh, transformants per microgram. How, you know, your efficiency is much higher than this. Um, uh, and why? Why do you think that happened? Now, there may be a reason why that's higher. Um, I'm not exactly sure of this number here. I know we put five microliters in, but I'm not exactly sure of the original concentration of DNA. So, but this is how you would calculate transformation efficiency for your um, uh, molecular biology lab, the first one that we did at the lab. Thanks.